The Distinguished Club Program is the primary tool in evaluating the progress and success of your club. Today, we have our district's foremost expert on how the DCP program can be used in your club. Please welcome past district governor, distinguished Toastmaster, Matt Branstead. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. As Vice President of Education, Robin mentioned that the DCP, the Distinguished Club Program, is your scorecard for both how well your club is doing, but also how you, well your members are doing. So I want to go through this in the simplest way that I have discovered to explain. So please, if you want to take notes, what I would what you should start out is across the top, write the number five, D, seven, S, nine, P. Take up. Down the side, write the numbers one through 10. I won't explain to most of you how to do that. Across the bottom, write the number 20 or plus five. On this other side, write PREZ, VPE, VPM, VPPR, Secretary, Treasurer, and Sergeant at Arms. And just for fun, write MOF. We'll come around to that. All right, if someone would volunteer, please give me a number between six and eight. All right. Between six and eight. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Seven. Seven. Very good, thank you. In your club, with your club officers, you're going to work on the Distinguished Club Program. What is the first thing that as a club we are trying to attract? new members. So our Vice President of Public Relations is our first line of how we're trying to attract new members. When the new member, when the prospecting new member comes in, who is helping them welcome those new members? VP of Membership. VP of Membership, but many times the Sergeant at Arms is the first person there but you want to introduce them to the Vice President of Membership because we're going to get them an application. When they get the application and they turn that in, they're going to send, give that money to the treasurer and get their name on your roster with the secretary. So this is all part of the plan. Also, one of the things that the VP of Membership should be doing with help from the Vice President of Education is make sure that with, before their next meeting, they should have a mentor. This is very critical and good. Now with your DC, DCP program, if you're recruiting new members, what is one of the first ways in which you can get a point for the DCP if you're recruiting members? Number seven, four new members. You've been working together with your Vice President of Public Relations, your Vice President of Membership, your Vice President of Education to get them a mentor and get them a sign on schedule. But your first point that's achievable is four new members. Now when you bring in new members, we've been talking about getting them a mentor, getting them on the speaking cycle. So what is the first thing that a new member could achieve during their Toastmaster journey? Competent Communicator, or CC. Try not to use too many in acronyms, but for today, we will. So if, the, if you get a Competent Communicator, to get a DC point point, you need two people during the year to get the Competent Communication. Two Competent Communications equals one point towards the DCP. 
What is the other manual that is received by a brand new member? Competent it's leader. The competent leader manual. So it's the CL manual, competent leader. If your new people or people that came in last year are working towards it, then when you have at least one person complete the CL, that is another point. So we're up to three points right now on the DCP program. The people who've been in the club a little while is an opportunity for them to work on advanced manuals, but I'll come back to that. Why are we here today? To get trained, officers trained. And it was mentioned that if you have four officers trained during this period, and four officers trained during the winter period, usually in District 16, January and February, if you have four and four during that period, you get another point, officers trained. And none of this makes any difference if you're not a real club, which means pay your dues. Dues pay. All right, now guess what? If you had two CCs, one CL, four new members, your officers trained, and your dues paid on time, you've got five points. On the top of your list, it says 5D, that means you're a distinguished club, or at least a candidate to be a distinguished club. There's one other key component of being distinguished club at any level. Your club must maintain at least 20 members, or if your club started below 20 members during this year, you can add five new members. If you started with eight members, you can get to 13 and you still qualify for DCP. If you start with 15, you gotta go to 20. If you start with 19, you still only have to get to 20. So 20 members or plus five to be eligible for the Distinguished Club program. So you begin to see how your team of officers works together to make sure that you are meeting these criteria. Is it that important that your club is a Distinguished Club? You get a ribbon, everybody likes ribbons, everybody likes trophies. But the important part of the DC Pre program is not that you're getting a ribbon or that your club's getting a ribbon, it's showing that you're meeting your club members' needs. <coughs> that they are getting what Toastmasters is here to give them, and that's that competent communication, that leadership where leaders are made. Everything else after the first five points is showing that your club is even more successful or more able to do better things. So we mentioned some of the people who perhaps got their CC last year, they would be working on an advanced communication manual. So let's say that you have one person get an advanced communicate manual or finish two manuals for the advanced communication modules. That's one more point. You're still recruiting, and we've heard a lot about how people come and go in Toastmasters. Worldwide, there's about a 40% drop off in Toastmasters. So you're not the only club that is seeing people come in and join, and then some of them leave. I think you do, as a club, try, need to try to find out why those people might be leaving. Some of them, as we've heard today, are taking new jobs. And that causes them to move out of the city or maybe not be eligible for your club if it's a corporate club. Some people just have life things that come up. New kids or other things that will bring them out of a club. So you should always be recruiting. Bring in at least eight new members a year. If you bring in that second four new members, then you get Another point. Now we're up to seven. The seven, S, S is a select distinguished club. 
and that's just a little bit higher bar that shows that your club is going to a little bit higher level. Now, the others are all just like the four new members. It's all a little bit of grading. Go back and you get two more members to have a CC. And if you're bringing in eight new members every year, then maybe not this year will they complete a CC. But I always suggest that a new member should finish their CC in no more than two years. Some smaller clubs, they can finish it in one year but no more than two years. So as vice president of education, part of your job is to track that and to make sure that they're staying on track, make sure that they're not avoiding the opportunity to speak because if they're doing that, they're not meeting their goals, even though they think they are, they're not. The CEL, it takes a little bit longer time because you're doing a lot of roles but remind your club members week in, week out, to bring their CL manual because the jobs and the tasks that they're doing every week, Toastmaster, general evaluator, evaluator, speaker, table topics leader, timekeeper, grammarian and all counter, and there are eight of them and I can think of seven right now, oops. Those are things that are in that CL manual all they have to do is bring that and hand it to someone and they can work towards their CL. A CL shouldn't take more than two to three years for that new member coming in. If they're not doing that, then you, perhaps you're not working hard enough to push your members. This AL, that may happen three years or four years into their journey towards being a, toast, or being a Toastmaster. But when you get two people in your club, you get another point for one more AC. Now the CL, I don't want to go in, is not only the competent leader, but it can also be the advanced leader or even a DTM. So you actually have three components of the CL and any person in your club who gets a C competent leader, an advanced leader, or a distinguished Toastmaster, DTM, We'll get that point. Well, now we went past nine points. Presidents distinguished. There are some clubs who take great pride in being presidents distinguished year after year after year. Two clubs in this district have been the presidents distinguished club now for 15 consecutive years. And part of that is they have the plan. You were taught this morning about the club success plan. Part of that plan is how will you take your members to each step? Now the unique and great thing about Toastmasters that I explain to people all the time is this is a self-time program. So if a person left your club because they had children and they come back five years later and they had finished five speeches, do they have to start over? No, they can start where they left off. If a person takes three years to get to distinguished club, to distinguished Toastmaster, my first observation about them is they're crazy and they don't have another life. But I have seen people get a distinguished Toastmaster in three years, two and a half years. Anything less than that, I'm not sure they're doing the program. It took me nine years. I have met people in this room today, not currently sitting in this room, that took 30 plus years to get Distinguished Toastmaster. It is a journey worth taking, and it is a journey worth sending your club members on. A couple final points, MOF. The first thing that your club should be doing, just as I mentioned, bring your CL manual, your club should always, always, always be doing manual speeches. I sometimes pick on experienced Toastmasters because they think that they no longer need to bring a manual speech or do a manual speech. I have went all the way through all the manuals. I don't want to do that manual speech. I don't need it. Well, what you're doing is being unfair. 
You're being unfair to yourself because perhaps you're not pushing yourself. You're being very unfair to your, to your evaluator. Sometimes as a very experienced speaker, your evaluator is brand new. And if you're one of those top speakers in our district and you stand up in front of an inexperienced speaker and give them no guidance, you can actually push them out of the club. And third, you're being unfair to your club because without manual speeches, you cannot achieve these other goals. The second is organization. Make sure your club meetings are organized. We all have agendas. If your club doesn't have a good agenda that you're following all the time, please get with one of the more experienced clubs, get with your mentor, get with your area governor. Make sure you have a good agenda that people follow because when your guests come in, if you're wasting their time, they won't come back. But if you show them how you can do a great meeting in less than an hour, they will want to come back and be part of it and wish that that was going on in every other part of their life. Last F, have some fun. If you start your meeting early and have some laughs, and sometimes we have some speeches that are real tear jerkers, and those sometimes are the speeches we need to hear. But at the end of the meeting, think of a couple ways that you can bring humor back into the meeting at the end. Some clubs do it through awards, some clubs do it through a, something called observational humor. But if that guest comes in and they had a few laughs at the beginning, and maybe they cried a little bit during the speeches, but they had some laughs on their going out, they're going to walk away from that meeting going, wow, I had fun and I want to come back. Manual speech is well organized and a lot of fun will create clubs that people want to continue to come and be a part of. All of these things work together to ensure that your club is doing the very best it can, not so that you get a ribbon and not that you get recognition, although those are fun and those are and those clubs that have been presidents distinguished for 15 years, they're now in a friendly competition to make sure, because if either one of them drops off, the other is going to give them a hard time. <laughs> but that's not what it's about. It's about each member meeting their needs and taking them to the higher level. Thank you.